I'm telling you, you can't go wrong taking advice from me on what to wear. Back in the day, my fashion style was considered cutting edge by everyone in the academia. Really? Well, then, uh, sure, M Madam Farzan. Maybe you could pick out a few fashionable outfits for us. Farzan! Nilu! <gasps> Even Dia and Candace are here! What are you all up to? Candace and I bumped into these two while we were strolling through the streets. Madam Farzan here is pretty friendly. When she heard that we were buying clothes, she decided to give us some help. Hmm. I don't really see anything I'm familiar with. Never mind. We can purchase some textiles and make the clothes ourselves. Let's go with the plain fabric as our base. And embroider red and pink flowers on. Oh, and some green leaves. Oh, wait a sec. Uh, you sure that's the latest style? That sounds a lot like what the older folks back home would wear. Don't worry. This style is a timeless classic. Uh, no thanks. This is actually sounding pretty weird. Wait, wait, wait. Madam Parzan's right. That style is a classic, and used to be mainstream fashion. But these days, there are some other options too. If you don't mind, how about I pick some clothes out for everyone? It's not often that we get to meet up, especially since Candace rarely makes it to Sumera City. Also, I know a few places where I can get a great bargain. Sure. I'm happy to leave it to you. I'll come with you to have a look. One always has to keep on top of what the youth of today are into. Madame Farazan? Uh, come quick! She's over here! Hm? Who are you? We're new in the Academia. We saw all the amazing things you did during the competition. Do you have any classes we could sign up for? Ahem. <clears throat> Of course I do. And you're both very welcome to join. That's great! We can't wait. Um, what's your area of research? Precision mechanics? I'm from Haravatat. Uh-huh. But you seem like an expert in machines. Wait, sorry. I remember now. You were representing the Haravatat Darshan in the championship. Oh, their classes are so boring, though. I'm sorry, ma'am. Let me know if you run any other classes in the future. I'll be there! <laughs> I knew it. What about you? Aren't you going to leave with your friend? I think you're amazing, Madame Farazan. And I'd like to learn from you for a while, if possible. I can take the class you're teaching as an option, even though cross-darshan lessons might be a little tough to arrange. But I look forward to learning from you. I see. You're a good egg, child. Don't worry. Study under me, and I promise you, you will get the best teaching available. Thank you so much, ma'am. Well, I won't disturb you any further. See you in class. I don't quite understand what happened there, but congratulations, I think. Traveler, Paimon, would you two like to come and pick out some clothes? We can't. We've got a meal with Kaveh later, and we have to check in with all the other contestants before then. Oh, by the way, have any of you seen Hat Guy or Layla? I don't know where Hat Guy went. We just saw Layla not too long ago, though. But she was hanging out with some other Ratahoa students, so we didn't get a chance to speak with her. Are you gonna go and see what she's up to? Ratahoa students? They must be the ones who voted for her to enter the competition, right? Oh, she didn't end up winning, so Paimon wonders how they feel about that. Let's go take a peek. If you don't come to Sumeru City often, classic floral designs aren't a bad choice. Those don't really go out of style. And of course, since you're putting this on your body, you need to consider the type of fabric the clothes are made from. Some materials might look stunning, but they can be terribly uncomfortable to wear. Agreed. After all, is fashion not the constant phasing in and out of classics? In that sense, you could always consider the style I suggested, too. Wait, uh, sorry, ma'am, but I think it could be quite a while before the style you recommended comes back into fashion. I actually think the style recommended by Madame Farazan is quite beautiful. Isn't it just? You have a discerning eye, my dear.
If you don't come to Samara City often, and of course, agreed. Wait, uh, I actually. Isn't it just. Time to lose. Yeah. No time to lose. Time to lose. No time to lose. to beat yourself up after doing as well as you did? How bad does that make us look, huh? Heck, it's not like any of us had the guts to enter the championship. I didn't see the whole thing, but you were the only contestant who scored points in both the first two rounds, right? And I heard that you actually found the diadem first in round three. <laughs> you came so close to winning the competition. Aw, oh, I just got lucky, I think. That can't be true. You had some really stiff competition out there. The renowned Tainari from Amorta, even Sino the General Mahamatra was there. You're amazing, all of you. Getting points off them is a huge achievement. The way I see it, people aren't exaggerating one bit with the nicknames they give you. You are a genuine genius. Aw, oh, thanks a lot. But I really don't think I qualify as a genius. In the second round, for instance, I dozed off and somehow found myself beside the device when I came to. Ah, oh, come on, don't be so hard on yourself. We've decided we're taking you out to celebrate and that's final. Let's go. Cheer up, Layla. The rest of today's all about you. Looks like things are going well for Layla. This is great. Hmm. We haven't seen Hat Guy since the end of the competition. Oh well, it's almost meal time. We'd better go meet up with Kaveh and Sino now. Uh, I can't believe it. But in the end, no one was disappointed in me. Uh, what a relief. Finally. Ooh, I can get some good sleep. No time to lose.
Are you sure you have enough to cover this? Don't blow it all at once. Don't worry. I budgeted very carefully, and this is well within my means. Anyway, I've lost count of how many times you've treated me. It's high time I return the favor. Oh, Traveler! Paimon! Over here! Ooh, look at all this! Good food, here we come! I heard that you went to see the other contestants. How's everyone doing? Fire-san found herself a student, and Layla's classmates are bowled over by how well she did. Uh, we couldn't find Hat Guy, though. Who knows where he's gone? All Haytham's gone missing in action, too. Huh. <laughs> the one time I'm actually in a good enough mood to treat him to a nice meal, he disappears without a trace. <sighs> that guy. Where the heck could he have gone? I still have questions about that note he left. <sighs> well, whatever. He can do what he wants. Now, let's eat. You shocked me a little when you hurled the diadem to the ground. On further reflection, of course, it made sense, but at the time I was expecting at least some amount of deliberation. Sachin's voice started talking to me inside my head from the moment I picked it up. I could feel his emotions, too. It was a mix of despair and horror swirling around inside my mind. He bombarded me with his ideas relentlessly, like he was trying to brainwash me. It gave me a splitting headache that only got worse as he went on. Like I was saying at the time, his views are not necessarily completely without value. But if all his research does is lead to misfortune, then we're probably better off without it. If his forbidden research were to spread in a harmful form, and cause people to suffer, the mantra would step in and ban it. I think you did the right thing. I suppose another way to approach it would have been to claim that you agreed to inherit his research, but give up the research as soon as you've inherited the wealth. Uh, but that wouldn't have been your style. I won't comment on his theories or experiments, but I don't believe that he was careless in his choice of candidate. He chose you. That means he knew what he was doing. Perhaps. I just think that if you accept someone else's things, you should honor their wishes. That's a good thing. It means that you have integrity. Thank you, oh my god, thank you. See, you get me, Kale. It's a good thing Al Haytham isn't here right now. He'd be quick to explain why you're wrong. Seems like you always include him in the conversation, even when he isn't here. Yep, no dinner with Kave is complete without a few words about Al Haytham. <laughs> I sense that Al Haytham has in fact been here with us all along. He's here? Where? Why didn't you tell me? He lives rent-free in each of our hearts. Ah. Uh. Uh, uh. Oh, that was horrifying. It literally sent chills down my spine. Good thing you didn't say that before we started eating. That would have killed the mood in a heartbeat. All right, enough about all Haytham. Tainari, did you achieve what you wanted out of the championship? I did. In the first round, in fact. Word of mouth proved very effective. I spoke to a handful of people, they told their friends, and so on. Now, a record number of people have signed up to attend the next lecture. Oh, are, are you free next month? You should come along, maybe even say a few words. About what? I don't know the first thing about anything Amorta related. Just play to your strengths. For instance, you could talk about the distinguishing features of rainforest architecture. Or ask everyone not to chop down too many trees the next time they're building a house. Oh, well that's no problem. Sure, I'll make time. Has everyone had enough to eat? I can order more if anyone's still hungry. I'm full. Thanks. I'm super full, too. <sighs> if only we could eat like this every day. <laughs> Yeah, we should do this more often. Work will always be there, but seeing friends is important too. This is a good restaurant. Let's definitely come here again. Sounds good. We should pick a few other places as backup options, though. There are other good places around here too? Oh, and don't forget to invite us if you go! There's nothing we love more than good food! Kave, do you have plans after this? 
I was thinking of maybe going to the Academia for some alone time. Nothing set in stone, though. Why do you ask? Mm, since everyone is free, why don't we play a few matches of Genius Invocation TCG? Eager to show off your new limited edition card, are you? Not to show off. This is my way of thanking you for your help. Only my best friend will have the honor of seeing this card's debut play. All right, sure. I didn't bring my deck with me, though, so I'll need to borrow one. Actually, Master, I made a new one a few days back. <sighs> Don't tell me you've been spending all your study hours playing cards. Come on, no need to be so stern. They do say that your innate interests are your best teacher, don't they? I miss the sweet cider of my hometown. Looking at the scores alone only gives you one side of the story. I see everything! Hmm. Narrow-minded Haravatat. Everyone hold hands! <laughs> Foolish Vahumana. Not drunk. Not Scores are the only clear measure of performance. I see everything! But I can't get out of the city fast enough, and you think I'd want to join the core of 30? to join the core of 30. Oh, I went on my fair share of crazy adventures back in the day. <sighs> Seems like I'll be staying up late again. But I yes. Looking at the scores alone only gives you <laughs> Didn't expect to run into you here. Oh, hey, Thumb. What are you doing here? And what are you reading? Are those... Sachin's notes? Yes. I came across his profile while I was organizing some documents and became interested in his research. If it wasn't for that, I never would have agreed to being a commentator. I had a hunch after seeing the fragment of his mind, and sure enough, I came here and found his research. Wait. So, you've read it already? Are you all right? How do you feel? I think you may have misunderstood something. 
The reason Sachin chose that architect to inherit his research was that only he could really empathize with both the calamity and the humanity that these notes seek to convey. Only one who resonates with these sentiments would suffer and begin to think of history as bleak, the present as perplexing, and the future as pessimistic. Empathy is a double-edged sword. Clearly, I am not the same sort of person as Sachin was. Empaths have many friends, and their wide social circle comes with certain societal advantages. But this also makes it hard for them to achieve their goals. Why's that? All important things in life involve other people. As such, it's extremely difficult to live a life that causes no harm whatsoever to others. If you really want to achieve your goals, you have to be prepared to make enemies along the way. Not everyone can deal with that reality. And that reality is like the material here. Objective, heavy, negative. But, at the end of the day, for all these experiment results and conclusions, it's just one person's perspective. Sachin's. So, what are your thoughts now that you've read it? As a scholar, Sachin was without a doubt a genius. He laid the blame for the darkness in the world squarely on humanity, experimented extensively with reliable results, and drew logical conclusions. In that sense, one might say his views were correct. So, people are bad? And things can only ever get worse? All of that's true? That is not a question for me to answer. Someone else will arrive shortly. You can ask them instead. All I will say is that the world is not built on correctness alone. Sometimes, being correct means nothing at all. Lofty ideals may provide no defense at all against nihilism, but perhaps little decisions can. By their own choice, the idealist seeks to bring happiness to all while denying themselves the same. Thus, they shall never reach even the borders of truth until they wipe away the ignorance that blinds them. I've never been able to agree with certain philosophies. Even Sachin himself struggled to comprehend the notion of sacrificing oneself for the greater good. But sadly, all viewpoints will find their supporters, and the way we see the world largely decides our fates. Alright then, I got what I came for. These research materials are yours to look after. I'll be off. Wait, so you came here just to read this stuff? You missed out on a big get-together, you know. A uh, get-together? Ah, yes, that makes sense. This is a good opportunity for that sort of thing. Guess what? Kaveh treated everyone this time. Then I'm sure he packed up the leftovers for me. See ya. Well, it seems like he really wasn't affected by this research. He said that someone else would answer our questions. Who do you think that'll be? Traveler, Paimon, you're already here. Oh, and that guy. Wait, so you asked him to take part in the championship? <laughs> yes, it was me. Are you surprised? Did you know that there was something wrong with the diadem from the start? And if so, why didn't you switch it out for another one? Because Sachin's research is not mistaken. He spent his entire life researching this topic, and these materials are a result of that. These are the crystallization of his wisdom. Yes, I was worried that the material might cause some disruption, but I didn't want to wipe away all his hard work searching for the truth. So instead, I had Hat Guy here help me keep an eye on things. Seriously? I think you can stop calling me that now. Why? Don't you like it? <sighs> well, anyway... If Sachin's chosen successor hadn't been able to handle his research, or if it had brought pain to more people, he would have intervened at a suitable moment. And after all that, the person Sachin chose turned his nose up at his life's work. Pretty hilarious. 
I was also hoping that this could be an opportunity for you to learn how to interact with people normally. But it looks like that didn't work out. That wasn't necessary. I'm still paying you back for your help. And the last thing I need is more reasons to be indebted to you. Maida, what did you mean by Sachin's research is not mistaken? Does that mean that you approve of his research? Hmm, put it this way instead. Truth to me is like a shroom bore. Some people only see the mushroom on the shroom bore's back, and they conclude that the shroom bore is a mushroom. Others see only the shroom bore's body, and they declare that the shroom bore is a boar. Still others look deeper inside, and determine that the shroom bore is meat. These conclusions are all correct in their own way, but none of them objectively describe the shroom boar. Paimon kinda gets it. The world is the same way. No one, not even I included, can understand it in its entirety. All of us are somewhere on the path toward truth. Within the confines of our limited knowledge, some may blindly believe in the beauty of this world, and others may focus only on its evils. In truth, the most important thing isn't what state the world is in now, but what people hope it will become. But of course, I don't mean that as a criticism or a call to action. Ultimately, my duty as the God of Wisdom is to guide every form of wisdom to a place where it can find its purpose. That was a long speech. So what are you actually going to do with these research materials? Because Kaveh, as the successor of this research, does not wish to see these ideas disseminated, I will seal it up. But even though Sachin's research could be considered negative wisdom, it is still a building block of the truth. If someone wishes to follow in his footsteps in the future, I will not stop them. I also look forward to the day that a member of the Vahumana Darshan can not only comprehend his theories, but also find a way out from the despair as well. <laughs> Vahumana doesn't have that kind of talent. Wait, you're not intending to keep me in Vahumana long term, are you? <laughs> I don't remember signing up to become a scholar. Don't you think I'm useful enough to you as a prisoner? Oh boy, here we go again. You think so? Well, to that, I would say that in Sumeru, even prisoners have a right to an education. I hope that your studies in Vahumana will help you deal with your own fate, and learn how best to settle old debts from your past. I will reveal your final thesis myself. I am expecting great things from you, Mr. Hat Guy. <laughs> Twenty years ago, the Academia had just received Sachin's estate. To celebrate the huge investment, the Academia extravaganza that year was grander than usual. I was very young then, and I remember seeing posters for the Interdarshan Championship all over the city. I couldn't help but mention it to my father. I even told him that I really liked the look of the diadem. It was so unique. So he said, Why don't I win it? so I can let you play with it for a few days. That made me very happy, and I nodded enthusiastically. But to my surprise, he didn't win. And when he got back home, he seemed extremely depressed. Later, he left home, saying that he wanted to do some investigating in the desert. The quicksand got him not long after that. For many years, I 
couldn't face up to it at all. If I'd just kept my mouth shut, maybe none of it would have ever happened. Wait, so the person we came across in our investigation, who went into the desert 20 years ago, it was... Hmm... <laughs> Is that why Sachin thought I looked familiar? I can't believe it. My father was always too kind for his own good. Sachin's research would have saddened him greatly. He must have gone into the desert when he heard about it to find those who were still suffering. It all makes sense now. <sighs> I've tried telling myself so many times over the years that maybe his sudden depression wasn't because he didn't win the competition. Maybe something else was going on that I wasn't aware of. But in the end, it all started with me mentioning the competition to him. Oh, Kave! Don't worry. I... I destroyed the diadem. There will never be another tragedy like this again. Never again. <laughs>
I can't wait any longer!
case. No time to lose. Extravaganza again. 